Nate, you ready? No. Call to order the February 8th, 2023 City of Chaska Planning Commission meeting. Liz, can you take roll? Yes. Commissioner Austin? Here. Boswa? Here. Campbell? Here. Gorey? Here. Kerber? Here. Olson? Here. Purdy? Here. Urbanski? And Chairperson Brass? Here. Uh, after roll, we'll adopt the agenda. Can I have a motion to adopt the agenda? I'll make a motion to adopt the agenda. Second. Commissioner Gorey, second by Austin. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have visitor presentation. If there's anyone here that would like to address the commission that's with something that's not on the agenda tonight. Doesn't look like it. So we'll move in to approve previous meeting minutes. Has everyone had a chance to review the me previous meeting minutes? With that, would someone like to make a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Got a first by Olson. And second. Olson. Second by Baswa. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. With that, we'll move into the consent items. To adopt the resolution recommending approval of amended legal description for the final plot of Hickory edition. Is there any discussion on that? Okay, so with that, anyone like to make a motion to approve the consent items? I'll make a motion to approve the consent items. Second. 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 Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Right into action items. And it does look like both are public hearings tonight. Liz, can you start with 7A? Mm -hmm. All right, thank you members of the Planning Commission. Uh, our first action item this evening uh, is for a zoning ordinance amendment to the city's uh, shoreland management section of the code, section 15.24 to be exact. Um, just to give a, a little bit of a background, um, this is stemming from a letter that was received from the DNR, which dates back to May 18th of 2022. Um, so. A little under a year uh, we received this letter um, it was basically a notification from the DNR um, to notify the city that our current shoreland management ordinance um, had a couple areas that needed updating uh, those two areas uh, that they've signaled uh, were the um, were certain shoreland areas that were not already included uh, in the ordinance um, so the amendment this evening would include those uh, additional shoreland areas and then they also uh, notified us of some classifications that need to be uh, used in the ordinance as well so that also is a part of this amendment uh, they did give us a uh, one year to uh, make the changes to our code uh, based on um, the letter that was received to them or from them so by May 18th of this year uh, did we need to make these changes that's why we're moving forward with this uh, amendment this evening. Uh, so specifically, um, the amendment gets down to adding the water courses that were um, uh, notified to us by the DNR. Uh, so the added water courses uh, within the city's shoreland ordinance would include Gifford Lake, uh, Nysons Lake, also known as Strunk's Lake, um, Assumptions Creek, uh, an unnamed creek and an unnamed stream. <laughs> I will show that on uh, the map that we also provided to you in your packet as to where those are exactly located. Um, in addition to adding those certain water courses, uh, we also had, or we all are also adding the shoreland classifications um, that uh, the DNR uh, sent to us. Uh, so that includes tributaries and agricultural classifications. Um, and then also the other update uh, to occur would be uh, the classification of the West and East Chaska Creeks. Um, our ordinance currently classified them as general development, but they really need to be classified as tributaries um, with that added classification into the ordinance. So that is another change uh, with this amendment. 
Uh, so to give you an idea of where these added water courses are, those are highlighted in red on this um, shoreland uh, overlay map. Uh, so the unna unnamed stream is on the north side of the city, kind of stemming off of Lake Bavaria and into uh, East Chaska Creek. Uh, much of this area is already encumbered by development. There's portions of it that run through some rural residential area. So really that's kind of the area that would kind of come into play with uh, meeting the shoreland ordinance uh, at the time of development. Uh, the unnamed creek is uh, on the more so the southwest portion of the city. Um, it comes from Dahlgren Township into the city of Chaska, um, kind of in the um, uh, area known as Southwest Chaska. Um, most of this is encumbered by a ravine area, so much of that is already protected by uh, the ravine preservation measures that we already have in place. Um, and then lastly, Assumptions uh, Creek is located more so on the southeast side of the city. Uh, again, comes from the Chanhassen side um, and uh, skirts into kind of the southeast portion of the city. Um, most of that, again, is an open space area, but some of it does cross over into area that has potential for development. Um, so again, at the time of development, um, uh, we would look at uh, how the ordinance is being met. And then the addition of Gifford Lake and Nysons Lake, or Nysons Lake, I'm not sure how to pronounce that, um, are both outside of the city limits. However, when there's a waterway um, or a lake within 1,000 feet of the city's boundary, that's kind of the DNR's um, trigger for us to include in our ordinance. So these don't necessarily um, have much impact on the city in terms of um, their location and the ordinance requirements um, given where they're located. So Gifford Lake is um, located uh, just south of the city, south of the Minnesota River. You can see downtown Chaska kind of on the north side there. And then uh, Neeson's Lake um, is located uh, to the south east of the city. So downtown is kind of in this general area if we were to pan over on this map here. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, we're asking you to make a motion this evening to recommend approval of the zoning ordinance amendment to section 15.24 shoreland management uh, based on the draft ordinance, which would be in compliance with the DNR's um, request and requirement to uh, uh, be compliant with uh, their state statutes. Um, and then if this were to move forward this evening, that this would uh, come forward in front of the city council on February 27th. Happy to answer any questions. Um, otherwise, this is a public hearing for this item. Okay, thanks, Liz. Um, two things, one, when we open up the meeting, just like to point out, we have a couple new faces tonight and we'll, at the end of the meeting, kind of go around and introduce each other. And then two, in my planning commission prep with the city, I, the unnamed creek and unnamed stream, I thought it'd be appropriate if the Planning Commission could name those. <laughs> Since you know, if they are unnamed, if there's an ability to, we could vote on it and throw some names out there. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, I, I, does anyone have any questions or comments for the city or anything to discuss? If not, we'll open it up for it's a public hearing for the, for the public. I have one question and that's, why aren't the other lakes along Chaska Creek showing? Like Big Woods, McKnight, Jonathan, and Grace? Do you know the reasoning? I mean, honestly, I don't know the exact reasoning as to why those aren't included. I think um, when they hit a certain size or type, that's when they start to get included or the DNR looks to them as, you know, um, amenities within the city and therefore should have preservation methods over them. Yeah, my understanding is that those lakes are extremely shallow and they're more sort of a flowage and part of the East Creek, uh, Chaska East, East Creek channel. Okay. Um, I don't know what the words I'm looking for, but th that's kind of what they're part of. Um, and so I, they don't rise, kind of like Liz was saying, to the level of Hazeltine or Bavaria, um, where they're considered a lake that needs to be named per the DNR's uh, classification system. 
And it seems like this is just more of a formality with the DNR and is not going to have any kind of impact on our any development and or current activity around those areas. Yeah, you're right. I think, you know, there is potential, um, you know, with the buffers on Assumption Creek in particular, there's a couple pieces of property there that are developable um, so that, you know, now they'll be needing to meet these requirements. It doesn't make them undevelopable. And that would be the same for, we'll call them unnamed. Unnamed Creek um, is in a uh, ravine area, so it's pretty surrounded by wooded steep slopes um, that I think is going to get pretty close to the buffer that the DNR is calling for anyway. Um, so development isn't likely to occur within that buffer, not a lot anyway. Um, and for unnamed stream, uh, it's kind of a similar situation. Things have either either developed around it or the areas that are undeveloped are um, within, there's some ravine system that's in that area also. Um, it's also within the green belt area um, that if that area over by McKnight Road ever does develop, um, it'd be that cluster development um, approach that was applied um, uh, in Cheval. In Cheval. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of discretion there that's applied as to trying to keep away from those natural amenities. That ends up being a goal with that sort of development anyway. Um, so it shouldn't have a huge impact on that area. And being that's the DNR, even if we had an issue, we probably don't have a choice in the matter. That's another good point. Yeah. <laughs> they did give us a year. They gave us a year. Okay, well with that, if it, is there any more questions? I'll have to open to the, to the public hearing. I need to open it up. So we'll open up the public hearing at 7:12. Anyone like to speak to the commission on this? Anyone on Zoom? Nope. There's no. Yeah, one. exactly. Everyone's very passionate about the unnamed streams. <laughs> We should be able to name. <laughs> Mission stream. <laughs> okay, I'm going to close the hearing at 7:12, and uh, bring it back to the commission. With that, would anyone like to make a motion to recommend approval? I'll yes. make a motion. Mr. Laswa. I'll make a motion to recommend approval of zoning ordinance amendment that would modify section 15.24. Shoreland management of the zoning ordinance to read as attached draft added. And would there be a second? No second. Commissioner Corey. And all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll move us on to our next item on the agenda, 7B. Liz, can you take it away? <clears throat> oh, I am. Sorry. And get the cue, you guys. All right, uh, for our sec second uh, and final. Uh, Action item this evening. This is for the S slot in the Ernst Home, uh, also known as the Chaska Yards project, being proposed by Carver County CDA. Uh, they are proposing a preliminary site and building plan, a preliminary plat, and a zoning ordinance amendment uh, with their project. Uh, so the site in question this evening is located in downtown Chaska. Uh, it's on the east side of Highway 41. This is known as Block 37 of downtown, so it's in between uh, 3rd Street East and 2nd Street East um, and Walnut Street North. Uh, both these properties, um, known as uh, 217 Walnut Street, which is where the Ernst Home is located, and you can see it on this aerial, and then to a or I'm sorry, 211 Walnut Street for where Ernst Home is. And then 217 Walnut is the vacant S lot. Um, these are both the sites uh, in question for the Chaska Yards project. And then uh, just to give you some more context as to the surroundings, there's a city owned public parking lot on the south side of the site. There's commercial businesses on the north side, additional commercial on uh, the west side. 
and an alleyway that um, provides a midsection uh, break through the block. Um, to go over what the city's process is, I'll go into a little bit more detail than I normally do on this slide since we have a few new, new uh, faces in the, in the room this evening. Um, with any land use application or project uh, going through the planning process, it typically requires a three-step process with the city. Uh, not all applications necessarily uh, require this, but I would say a majority do. Um, and that pertains to any new development, uh, uh, redevelopment happening, plats or subdivisions, um, new uh, housing developments um, or new buildings um, coming into the city usually have to go through this three-step process. And when we say three steps, um, we're talking about uh, the first step being concept plan. So at this step, it's more of a high-level overview of what the project entails. It doesn't necessarily get into kind of the nitty-gritty details uh, of a project uh, in terms of you know engineering or architecture. It's really to kind of give you that first look at the project and provide helpful feedback uh, for the applicant to put into uh, the, the next stage, which is the preliminary site and building plan or preliminary plat. At this step, step it's more of a, a detailed uh, proposal, including all of the engineering and architectural uh, requirements. Um, and also starts to address some of the comments and concerns that were received during the concept plan uh, first step. Um, at this point, we like to say it's, it's more at a 75% completion stage um, uh, and uh, entails more of the um, uh, crux of the matter or the entitlements of a project. So uh, at this point, um, if it's required or needed, uh, usually a rezoning occurs uh, or an amendment to a zoning ordinance occurs in line with the project that's being proposed. Um, and then if that uh, moves on, the third and final step is the final site and building plan and final plat um, or some version of final uh, at the third step. And at this point, um, this is uh, pretty much a fully baked plan uh, and um, at that point, dotting I's and crossing T's is kind of the uh, the purpose of that third and final step. And all three of these steps do go through Planning Commission and City Council review. Um, so you do get three versions or three um, uh, viewings of the proposal as it goes through the process. Um, and usually at that third and final step, if uh, the details are kind of wrapped up and concerns are taken care of, it's usually on consent agenda. So you don't necessarily discuss it at that point. Concept plan and preliminary are different where um, more uh, or their action items at that point. So you do have discussion surrounding both those steps. So if those two um, stages go well and the final is really wrapping up the details and there's not a lot of questions and concerns, uh, then again, it gets placed on the consent agenda and it's more of a, a quick motion, so to speak, at that point. So with this project in particular, um, we are at the second step in the process. So we already did go through concept plan approval, and I'll get into some of those previous approvals that have occurred with this project. But right now we're at the second step in the three-step process with the city. Um, just to give a little bit of history on this project, um, and this might be a little bit of a refresher for some of uh, the members in this room who've seen this project come through a couple different times. Um, but the history of this site uh, with the Ernst home in particular, uh, it actually did not originate or be, uh, was not constructed on where it currently sits today. Uh, the Ernst home um, used to sit in the location of where Fireman's Park is uh, today. Um, it was one of a few homes on Chaska Boulevard um, that were on the edge of Fireman's Park. Um, and back in 2014 when the city was going through uh, the redevelopment of Fireman's Park, um, it was determined at that time to relocate the Ernst home. Uh, the re reason being is that this is a historic structure so that it has a lot of significance within the community. It's a Chaskabrook home. Um, so preserving it um, was a priority as a part of that redevelopment project. So the lot that it's located on now was highlighted as a 
uh, a spot for it to relocate to. And so um, that relocation occurred in, in 2014 to move the house to where it currently sits today. Um, at the time that it got moved, uh, the home and lot directly north of the Ernst home, um, the S home as it's uh, known historically, uh, did catch on fire shortly after the relocation of the Ernst home, um, which created extreme damage uh, to the S house. Um, we did go through several uh, rounds of uh, grant applications to try to preserve the structure because that home was also on the historic local historic register as well as the national register for being contributing in a national district. However, we were unsuccessful in obtaining grants uh, through those uh, two cycles that we applied for. Um, and really at that point, um, the only thing um, that we could do was demolish the structure since it was in such disrepair and the, the cost to rebuild it was substantial. Um, so at, after that point, uh, the S lot and the Ernst home, which are both owned by the city, um, have been marketed together to uh, be redeveloped and reused. Uh, so they have been sitting vacant um, uh, since 2014 when the relocation occurred, as well as 2017 uh, when the S house was ultimately demolished. Um, there was a different project that came through the, uh, the city's process uh, dating back to December 2018 and June of 2019. Uh, this project was proposed uh, by Tyson Talley um, to redevelop the area into uh, seven residential rental units uh, for that would exist in both the Ernst home and then uh, two new buildings on the S lot and Ernst home site. Um, they did get up to uh, preliminary approval. They did not come back for final approval um, and they subsequently um, withdrew uh, their project and did not move forward with it citing some financial difficulty in um, achieving the project. Um, getting into some of the historic significance of these two um, properties. Uh, 211 Walnut Street is where the Ernst House currently sits today. It's also known as the Readley House um, historically. Um, this has historic significance due to the date as to when it was constructed, which was in 1884 by Andreas Readley. And again, that was on the Fireman's Park site. Uh, the layout of the home is also significant, uh, being that it's uh, composed of Chaska brick and uh, contains a T-plan uh, crosswing type layout, uh, which is notable for its uh, time period. Um, and then it does have two, it's kind of a double faceted um, historic uh, uh, designation. It has local designation and national uh, designation being a con contributing uh, resource in the Walnut Street National District. And then the his historic significance of 217 Walnut Street, which was uh, the uh, lot for the former S home. That one was also uh, built in 1886 by Joseph S. It was um, originally a Chaska brick home, um, although it later on got covered by stucco, but uh, the structure of the home did remain intact and in being a, a Chaska brick home. And then again, it was demolished in 2017 after a fire occurred to it. And it also had uh, the double historic significance to it like the Ernst home. Uh, looking at the site um, for this project, overall it's 0 0.4 acres total. So each lot is about uh, 0 0.2 acres in size. Um, so together they're 0 0.4 acres uh, for the site. Uh, the S lot, uh, which is the northerly lot, um, is um, currently vacant uh, today. Uh, the Ernst home sits on the Walnuts, or 211 Walnut Street lot on the south side there. Um, both of these properties have direct access to the alleyway on the back side or the west side uh, of the lots, and that would be maintained. Um, with this project, they both front onto Walnut Street, and Walnut Street um, is a part of a, a national historic district. Um, so there is um, uh, 
both uh, our own Heritage Preservation Commission and uh, the State Historic Preservation Office both have um, a stake in the game, so to speak, uh, due to the historic nature of this property. Um, and then the zoning on the property, due to the previous approvals that occurred back in 2019 with the Tyson Tally project, it did get rezoned to a planned residential district, so PRD 74 to be exact. So getting into uh, the details of the request, uh, what specifically is being requested this evening is a prelim preliminary site and building plan and a preliminary plat approval. Uh, both of those would entail uh, redeveloping the S lot and rehabbing the Ernst home um, for a residential use. Uh, the platting of the site uh, would also include uh, creating individual lots uh, for the units proposed. Um, and then also um, kind of as a remainder of that, uh, another lot will be created for the public parking lot to the south due to some of the encroachment of that lot into this site. Um, this existing conditions plan shows kind of where the lot line sits today, which encroaches into um, the public parking lot to the south there. So as a part of the platting process, uh, we'll be able to correct where that line uh, needs to be so that all of the city-owned parking lot will fall on city-owned land and uh, the remaining, remaining uh, housing project will remain on private property. Um, I also want to note with the plat um, and due to this property um, uh, being a part of a land trust, um, it does provide some nuance in terms of how uh, platting of the individual units uh, needs to occur. Um, there's a couple different ways that that can be done. Um, and one way is, you know, going through the traditional platting process with the city and creating separate lots within the plat. Um, or there's another way through Carver County to provide individual lots on the units themselves. Um, so we are currently working through that and figuring that out uh, with the applicant to determine what the best method uh, to establish out there is. Um, so as a part of the final plat, when that application comes in after this one, um, those pieces would, would be figured out. Um, so it's very likely that the final plat may look a little bit different uh, to what the pre-plat is showing uh, this evening, uh, just as um, kind of a precursor that uh, the applicant and the city are currently working on what the best me method is um, to plat those individual units. So uh, if I yep. provide a little extra there. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's important, especially you know, for the new folks who maybe aren't as familiar with the process, um, the plat document will really kind of, it defines how the lot lines are set. Um, so that's the thing that we're trying to figure out is where exactly those lines will go and come to a final determination on that. Uh, Liz was about to dive into the site plan, so you know, how the buildings are going to look, where they're going to be on the, on the uh, development and that kind of stuff. Um, regardless of how the plat questions get determined, the site plan will, will look like what we're presenting tonight. So that's not going to change kind of the, the outcome and the visual nature um, the physical design of, of the project. Um, we're not expecting any real, um, you know, material change there at this point. It's really about the details of those lot lines and mm -hmm. how that gets recorded with the county's records and all of that, that piece of it. Right. <clears throat> so as we uh, move forward and come back at the final stage, um, you know, being that um, the property is currently zoned PRD 74, we are all also asking an amendment to that this evening. Um, since the zoning ordinance document and the plat kind of speak to each other or um, reflect each other's layout, um, it's very possible that we would also come back with an amendment to fully um, reflect what the plat is showing. So I just want to make sure um, that's in front of you and you understand that kind of as this project moves forward. But to echo what Nate said, none of the site plan pieces are really going to change as a result of that. It's really kind of the lot line and making sure the, the zoning matches up to those legal descriptions. 
Um, so with the zoning ordinance amendment uh, proposed this evening, um, we have provided a draft ordinance document as a part of uh, the request. Um, really, uh, the amendment that's being proposed at this time is an update um, to what the original PRD 74 document shows. Um, so the update would include updating the project name because the previous document uh, reflects the old project name. It would update the legal descriptions and the approving graphic exhibits uh, for what's being proposed. Um, and then also including uh, a setback for the decks and the unenclosed porches on the rear setback uh, that's uh, proposed on the rear side there. Um, just to get into some of the details of what the project really entails, um, they are proposing four separate owner-occupied units uh, between uh, the Ernst Home and the three new uh, housing units um, uh, that are proposed. So one unit would go in the existing Ernst Home, and then three new housing buildings uh, would be constructed on the overall site. Uh, each of these units would also have their own private yards. Um, and then a detached garage with surface parking will also be proposed in the rear portion of the property. And I'll, I'll bring up a site plan uh, soon here showing that. Uh, and then lastly, uh, the Carver County CDA who is proposing this project uh, will be uh, listing these as affordable and targeted towards um, households that are at 80% AMI um, in demographic. I uh, just wanted to include this slide of uh, the existing Ernst home just to show, the, show you the existing conditions of this building. Um, so it's been vacant and um, just sitting on the property for the last uh, eight to nine years. Uh, so it definitely needs some TLC um, the way it sits today. It's still structurally very sound, um, but there are uh, um, much of its elements that need to be repaired or replaced um, to get it back to standing order. Uh, this is the site plan uh, shown on this slide, uh, just to show you the layout of uh, the different units here. Uh, the Ernst home, again, is on uh, the southeast uh, portion uh, of the site, and that would face out towards Walnut Street as it does today. The three new housing units are oriented on the north side, or what we now consider at this point, uh, 217 Walnut Street, uh, and the, they'll be kind of oriented around a communal area in the center here. So that was very intentional in terms of how they've designed uh, the layout of the site to have um, kind of a communal area that all of the units can utilize and gather and you know hang out and um, relax in, in these common areas. Uh, unit number one is uh, the unit that faces out towards uh, Walnut Street um, and the front portion of this home will also face towards Walnut Street so show some congruency between uh, the Ernst and the new unit here. The other two units um, will have access on both uh, the front and the back uh, that's the same for unit number one. Um, so they'll have access to both the common area as well as their own front uh, porch area. Uh, the detached garage, again, is on the southwest side. And the vehicle access to this garage would come from the alleyway like uh, it's operated before. In addition to uh, the detached garage, there will be four surface parking stalls. Uh, so each unit uh, would get their own uh, covered parking stall and then a surface parking stall in front of that. So each unit would have two units apiece. And this um, would meet the city's um, parking ordinance for this type of use uh, at two per dwelling unit. Um, in addition to having vehicular access, um, there's also pedestrian access that, that'll be uh, achieved from both the alleyway side as well as the Walnut Street side connecting into the public sidewalk there. So this will provide some um, circulation uh, between kind of the front and back of this site. And when we talk about the alleyway, we also bring up the term Paseo, um, 
which we noted in our staff report and kind of uh, as we've been progressing through this process um, with this project and previous project is um, with the Highway 41 project uh, uh, starting this year, this summer actually, um, uh, long before um, or as a part of the planning process for the Highway 41, which dates back several years, um, in the making um, is this I idea of a Paseo concept came up uh, kind of as uh, a result of, of those discussions. Um, the Paseo is really an idea that allows for additional pedestrian movement to happen away from the highway, so it's more of a safe haven uh, circulation point for pedestrians to use mid-block um, instead of using the highway 41 side, um, and so that this could be a safer, more enjoyable uh, path of travel for pedestrians. Um, so as a part of the Highway 41 planning process, um, we've worked with uh, a consultant, um, HKGI, to draft up some design plans for the Paseo, uh, which we included an excerpt um, in the staff report as to where it sits today in terms of um, the design. Um, so there's been a lot of discussion on how uh, this circulation would occur and connect into um, adjoining uh, lots. Uh, so with that, we've had um, priority or importance kind of put on how this overall edge, the west edge, really relates to the Paseo area. Um, so um, that kind of come in, comes into play with landscaping and uh, how the buildings look um, and that sort of thing so that that edge uh, feels uh, like it's a harmonious um, connection to the Paseo and what's being designed there. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more on kind of, you know, what they're doing with that um, in the landscape plan a little bit later and uh, the renderings that we have on this presentation. I also wanted to include uh, some of the turning movements um, that uh, are achieved with this overall site plan. Um, the exhibits shown on the left-hand side here are for cars that are accessing uh, the site, both uh, going north and south out of the alleyway. Uh, we wanted to make sure that turning movements can be achieved because the alleyway is um, it is what it is, and it. it can be quite tight uh, back there just with some of the, the buildings that um, skirt up to the property line on the west side. Um, so they have shown analyses to show that turning movements can be achieved back there in both directions um, for these units. Uh, also wanted to include the fire truck turning radius, which was more of a, a city um, uh, provided plan as we were going through the Paseo concepts just to make sure that movements um, in the back portion or the alleyway area can be achieved uh, with uh, emergency vehicles. So um, we have been able to show in an exhibit here that fire truck um, turns can be accommodated back there. This is a colored site plan of what's being proposed uh, just to give you kind of a clear visual of uh, everything that's being proposed out there, um, the Ernst home and then the new units, um, the community patio area and uh, additional yard space, just in terms of, you know, how they plan to activate those areas. And then the landscape plan, again, um, kind of getting back to, you know, what that Paseo edge looks like, you know, the green space uh, that they do have in between uh, the Paseo and the project uh, will be uh, adorned with uh, some shrubs and some decorative plantings and some deciduous trees along that back, um, and then other trees and uh, ornament, ornamental trees to kind of uh, provide additional uh, vegetation to the site. Um, this uh, slide is showing the Ernst Home uh, elevation plans. So with the Ernst Home being historic, um, there's uh, certain criteria that needs to be met, uh, known as the Secretary of Interior Standards. That's more evaluated on, on the HPC side, uh, which they took a look at uh, last night. Um, 
So much of what they're doing with the Ernst um, House is really maintaining what's there um, and then uh, replacing and repairing uh, where applicable. So the front porch area will uh, have a lot of repairs uh, with it um, and they'll be matching kind of the same um, type of railing that was seen out there um, during uh, its historic time. Um, the big change uh, to the house itself is there is a back entrance porch that's being added on the rear uh, side of the uh, building. Um, this will be constructed of uh, hardy board and then windows will be uh, placed in there as well and this will be painted white to uh, match the other uh, detailing elements of the Ernst home. Uh, this is the floor plans that are being proposed uh, with the back entrance porch on there. And then the new units are shown on this slide um, as well as the detached garage. Um, the unit number one are these first uh, four uh, elevation drawings that I'm circling with the cursor now. Units two and three will be a little bit different um, due to the grade change that happens on the west side of the site. Um, these will be more of a modified split layout versus a full two-story layout like unit number one. Uh, these units will be painted a dark gray color, what they call uh, night gray, uh, based on the spec that they've chosen. This would be the color for both the <coughs> detached garage and the new units. Um, this color, um, just from staff's perspective and also what was echoed at HPC, um, is there is a desire to hopefully get a color that um, is either lighter or more neutral, something that still provides contrast but fits in a little bit better with um, kind of the, the color palette of the Ernst home um, and overall context of where it's locating. Hey Liz? Yeah. Is the, I thought I saw in the text when I was reading through it, the, the HPC meeting, was there a meeting last night? Yes. And is the garage still going to be flat or pitched? Uh, they were favorable of the flat roof. They were, okay. Yes. And so it seemed like it was still potentially open-ended in our package. Yes, yep. Okay. We wanted to um, give the HPC uh, the opportunity to comment on that and evaluate the analyses that was provided by the applicant. Um, and based on some of the precedents that was seen in downtown, um, as well as kind of the comparison of scale um, and what's being seen from that edge of the site. Um, they were favorable of the flat roof concept moving forward. Um, these are the floor plans for the new housing units. Uh, unit number one is shown on the left hand side here. So this is a full two story type layout. I would say the kind of major change between um, unit one and units two and three is um, this will be oriented towards the Walnut Street side, so uh, they've included a, a two-story porch entrance um, on the front side there. It's basically to emulate um, the Ernst home and the uh, two-story uh, front porch design there, but in kind of more a, of a um, modern uh, take on it, just to differentiate the old from the new. Um, and then the uh, units two and three, again, have that modified uh, split layout, but will generally look the same from the outside um, with everything else. Uh, the fencing that's proposed, and this would delineate uh, the private yards, um, is a decorative cedar and mesh fence. Um, I think our only comment on that is they need to meet a four foot maximum Height, which uh, their spec is showing four foot four inches so they'll just have to address that in their final submittal but again that fence would generally uh, delineate um, kind of the private yards that are proposed for each of these units so one of the uh, amenities of uh, owning these uh, units is that each uh, unit will have their own yard space and I, that brings into another question real quick. Yeah. On unit three with the fence where number six is located. So six right up there, right behind Von Hansen's trash mm -hmm. service. Yeah, is that gonna be a solid fence or is that gonna be that same see-through fence? As far as what we know right now, it's gonna be the same throughout. 
Um, and in terms of meeting ordinance and what's allowed in the front and side is um, you're only allowed to do a decorative 50% opaque maximum type fence. So it wouldn't, just from a zoning perspective, um, it wouldn't allow for a privacy type fence to occur in that location. But you probably bring up a, a comment on, you know, what, what's being seen from that, from that yeah. view and kind of how to best achieve that. Um, but yeah, that's what they're proposing right now to meet zoning ordinance. I've got a follow on question to that. So can you go over again, uh, so these other businesses do not have any sort of trash collection areas in the back as far as? Von Hansen's does. Oh yeah, I, yeah. yeah, I see that, but so the, so um, as far as uh, the, the impact. The other, the other businesses do Yeah, not. the other businesses. As far as what the impact is to? Yeah, I mean, what's, is it just the back of the building, that's it? There's no sort of back door. The, the two other buildings to the, Correct. To the east of. Oh, Did sure. Yeah, they don't trash. have um, trash receptacles back there. Okay. I'm not really sure how uh, those other businesses, I, I'm assuming they use the street side uh, for trash pickup, but the only trash pickup in the back here is for Von Hansen's. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I didn't totally understand uh, what what you were asking, but thank you. Um, just going through a couple of renderings, they've provided several views of um, uh, into the site um, from a bird's eye perspective as well as a pedestrian scale perspective just to give us an idea of kind of the overall scale, what you're seeing, how people are experiencing um, this overall area. Uh, the top rendering here is looking from the communal area in between the new housing units and uh, to the south there. The bottom is looking from a pedestrian scale uh, from the Walnut Street side um, and shows the Ernst home as well as the new housing unit in that two-story uh, porch <clears throat> concept. And then another view uh, looking uh, north uh, from the communal area and then more of a bird's eye view um, looking at kind of the private or the yard space area next to the Ernst home and then the communal area as well. And then a couple other views. Uh, both of these are from the Paseo or the alleyway from the back. Uh, one's looking south and then one's kind of looking northeast from the Paseo. Uh, so yes, the HPC did review this at their meeting last night, um, and how they reviewed it, review it is they um, look at a site alteration permit, um, which is kind of the formal uh, application in the event that you're making any changes to a historic property. Uh, so they went through that approval last night. Uh, they also did see the concept plan approval um, back in uh, 2022 for this project. Um, and provided comments at that time. Um, and those comments were addressed in this preliminary submittal and site alteration permit submittal. And uh, overall speaking, they're favorable of the project. They're favorable of the flat roof uh, detached garage design. Uh, the only comment, uh, again, which was echoed from uh, staff, the staff report is just working on the lap site and color uh, for the new units in the detached garage. So to um, kind of reiterate uh, what things need to be worked on as they gear up for a final submittal with the city um, is the color again. Um, another piece is uh, the organization of the lots uh, for each unit. Uh, so making sure that is um, uh, laid out the way they need it to uh, at the final plat stage. Um, and then lastly, continuing to coordinate with SHPO on their project, uh, being that, again, this is in a national district. Um, they are required to um, coordinate with SHPO and their comments to make sure they meet um, SHPO standards. Uh, so with that, um, we're asking you to make two motions for this project uh, this evening. One motion would be to recommend approval of the preliminary site and building plan 
and the preliminary plat for the S lot in the Ernst home, also known as uh, the Chaska Yards project. And then based on the conditions that are listed in the staff report, um, and then another motion would be recommend approval of the zoning ordinance amendment to PRD 74 uh, based on the draft ordinance that's included in your packet. Um, this is a public hearing uh, for this project. Um, and then again, if it moves on uh, this evening, it would go to the city council on February 27th. Uh, the applicants are in the audience if you have specific questions for them. Um, otherwise, I'm happy to answer any questions as well. Thank Thanks, you. Liz. Uh, I do have a couple quick questions and then um, I'm, sure, I'm sure people may have as well. Um, so with the four units, is it, if I understand this right, is it going to be four separate PIDs? More than likely, yes. Okay. And then or, with, yes. And then with that, the, the common area in the middle is... How is, is that going to be like an outlot? Is there going to be like access agreements across that for people to get to their parking to their units mm -hmm. like on the title, that kind of deal? How yeah, I think handled? the way, you know, we're talking about it now is, yes, the communal areas, including the sidewalk, would be in an outlot um, that's going to be owned by the CDA or the land trust um, of the project. And that will provide the access. Correct. Okay. There, there might be some areas that need access easements on them. Yeah. We're still trying to figure that out right now, but um, yeah, all of that would be addressed okay. in the final plat. Um, then on something just with the with the zoning ordinance change, it, the setback, the encroachment of the of the, the deck that was uh, it, with standard of the city. That, that yes. I know it comes within the 15 foot, but that's also a standard with the city that you can encroach decks within like 10 feet is that within right? 10 feet so yep. they're not okay. proposing 10 feet they're only proposing up to five feet yeah um so we just want to make sure that setback is yep. addressed in the zoning and i think they brought up the fence um it is concerning for that one unit i mean you, you know buyers know what they get into when they go to it but perhaps maybe instead of a deciduous tree being an evergreen mm -hmm. tree or something like that mm -hmm. um access agreements over plants i think I think that's it for my questions. Obviously, it's a public hearing. We'll open it up. But first, if the commission has any questions for staff. Or I have one that's kind of tied on to the, the setbacks, I think. So for unit two, it seems, I mean, and I guess that's the part where I was like, are we getting very, we're getting close to the, prop, the side property line, and they have the deck, and we have a fence. Is how is that spacing there? So it's hard to see it, and mm -hmm. obviously I'm, I'm a picture guy, so. Um, yeah, pretty you mean as far as the yard? Mm -hmm. Well, because they're putting the fence, so they're gonna have the four foot fence somewhere to delineate what their yard is. And then they also have the deck that's protruding already. So are they in conflict? I mean, where, where's the fence gonna be compared to the property line compared to the deck? The deck. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see that you're seeing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the property line on that north side really goes up to the edge of those buildings. Yes. Yeah, so there might be a little bit of a, maybe one foot um, between the property line and the edge of those buildings. But there will be five feet between that side property line and where unit number two is proposed. And then there will be three feet uh, between the property line and where the fence is being proposed. So there's still going to be a three foot um, separation between the property line and where the fence and the, the unit. So they're going to have two feet from the edge of their deck to the fence in the backyard. And then how far to the existing um, businesses? Four feet. So three feet to the property line and then another foot. So those buildings on the north are basically <coughs> zero lot line. Correct. They're just like sitting on there. Yep. Right. Yep. And five feet is the um, the typical setback in downtown. There's a lot of, well, I should say, there's a lot of cases there's actually a zero lot line. But um, with current practice and current zoning, five feet is the, the side setback. <coughs> Can you go over that again? Is five feet from the building to the property line? Is that or five Correct. Feet from, yep. Okay. Then yep. From the property line to the deck is three feet. Yes. Or, no, I'm sorry. Five feet. Five feet between the deck and the property line. Okay, and the fence yep. is in there too, somewhere. Yes. Right on the line, probably. Yep. 
I think it's two feet off the, the building, so there's a three foot um, the the separation fence, between the feet. fence and the property line. Three feet to get around. I, I know you haven't opened it up yet, but. Yeah, uh, and I can. Uh, um, and he probably, I, they I, probably I, can, I can explain all of that. Better. If it wants, wants to okay. Uh, any other? Yeah. Um, we'll let you answer that one, and then I'm, I've got a few more that probably get into those details as well, too. Do you want me to open it up? Or do you have more questions for staff? Okay, anyone else have questions? The Paseo, that is going both directions, right? Right. And the then Paseo would be the north to south connection, mid block connection, yeah. So the Paseo is, is, is the, the alleyway. alleyway. Right. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So we can travel both directions, right? Correct. And then pedestrians will also use that. The general public. Mm -hmm. yep. Correct. Yep. For that small section. For that. that. Okay. And fire trucks can squeeze in there. I, well, yeah, I'm <laughs> trying to figure <laughs> that out. It's all, yeah, <laughs> Who wants a downtown I mean, I, I, here? I like the overall plan. I, mean, I like the affordability. I like the downtown reusing the historic house. I'm a little concerned about the fire truck, winter conditions. I'm sure they'd figure out a different way to make something happen if they had to, but. At any rate, we can go over that at the, at the final, but at the, at the end here. Uh, yeah. First, I'll open it up, the public hearing, so we'll open it up at 7.56. And um, anyone would like to address the commission, the applicant, we can do so now. Thank you, Chair Commissioners. Uh, my name is Todd Grover. I am from McDonald and Mac Architects in Minneapolis, and uh, I've been working with the CDA uh, to develop this with our team of landscape architects and engineers and, and um, uh, a bunch of people on the team. Um, uh, I'm more than willing to answer uh, any questions you may have. Liz did a great job of kind of explaining our, our scheme and, and some of the some of the rationale behind it of why we want to use it in this kind of communal backyard, um, things like that. Um, I, just a couple things. One for the the kind of conditions that were came on for a little lighter siding. Um, we can look at that and happy to do that. That's not a big issue. Um, reducing the fence down to four feet, that's not an issue. Uh, you brought up the, the um, idea of what the view of that Von Hansen's trash is. We would love to put something taller there Obviously, we can't. Um, thankfully, Von Hansen's right now is, they keep a very, kind of a tidy spot back there. So, um, but I think we may work with some landscaping to try to screen that a little bit more. Um, so, but it's something that, that we're, we're really looking at and, and being conscious of, you know, they don't look out their kitchen window and see, trash, see the trash. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Or evergreen or something. Yep, exactly. And yep. so I think we'll work with some plantings there. Um, the other trash, uh, you, you, you mentioned the other backs of those other um, uh, 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 businesses that's there. They actually, nobody uses that, the rest of that. So Von Hansen's is the only one that comes out towards the south. Um, the one that's on the corner, they actually have a garage door or something that comes out on, on the walnut. But yeah. the, I think the other two just go out to, uh, go out to the north. Um, the north lot line. Um, the, the problem there is, is there's a transformer, and Liz, I don't know if you wanted to bring up that plan. Um, there's a, a transformer to serve the, those businesses to the north that was placed there, um, and we're essentially providing kind of a three-foot easement in order for, or walkway in order for that access to be able to go through. If there's a different way to do that, we would be great. We'd love to do that, push that fence out a little bit more. Um, but in that in that back corner, right there, Liz is pointing, mm -hmm. um, is a transformer that uh, that serves those other businesses. There's two other trans. There's a couple other transformers next to the Paseo. Um, so, but this is a lead that's coming off of that transformer. So, we're trying to make the the, the best use of that space back there, um, knowing that kind of the these tight constraints are there. So that's the reason why. There's the three foot difference from the lot line to the fence is to provide that access uh, through there. So um, we'd love to, again, push it out, but I, I, I don't know if the city would allow us to do that to, to hinder that, that access to that transformer. So um, I think I answered all the questions so far, but happy to answer more. 
um, that you may have. I have a few more. Um, with the private yards mm -hmm. for unit, specifically on unit one, just looking at the diagrams, how are they going to access their yard? Um, because looking at the diagrams, well, it's essentially we'll have a, a we'll have a fence. We'll you know we'll, we'll have a, a a gate there that they can access that yard. So they're not going to be able to access it directly from the unit. They'll have to go outside through a gate to access that yard. So unit one is the only one that's going to have to do that. Um, yes, unit one would be the only one that had, just because of uh, how it's. We have essentially there's a central spine in that plan um, in order to to where the circulation is, and so um, we could maybe look at. I mean, we, we could look at to see if we can place a door there, but the the problem is um, it just doesn't doesn't necessarily coordinate with the with <coughs> we're trying to have compact plans and so having additional circulation in there. Um, but as I'm thinking about it, um, I think we might look because that. Upper corner there is kind of a dining room. Maybe there's a sliding glass door that can go out and access that. I, and, and that was the part where it's like just getting creative there because yep. you yep. have that one unit that, like you said, would have to go outside to actually access their yard. Um, who wants to do that? Yep. Uh, um, we'll definitely take a look at that. That's great. And then for unit four, so the, the Ernst house itself, yep. Yep. they don't have a private. They have a little. They have a little corner. Um, unfortunately, it's just you know as as we were trying to make this work, um, they they have the front yard, um, but they they also are just going to have a, a small back back corner. The benefit that they have is they have a much larger house um, than the other house than the other units that are being built. Um, they actually it's a three bedroom house for sure three bedroom, but they also have space in, in that's going to be it's a full basement that will probably have another bed, bedroom down there and so um, conceptually that's what we saw as the as the trade-off that they may not have you know hopefully that will be the person that doesn't ha have a lot of yard work they don't like, like taking care of the yard and but they want the bigger house so okay. um, two more questions so no storage yep so I see that there in one of the diagrams it has no storage sitting behind unit Yep, and um, some of the talk right now is to be able to haul some of this, the snow off-site, um, or the other the other uh, thought is, and we just learned about this that uh, Nate did say that along the paseo, in between kind of the edge of the paseo and the back side of that fence, um, we could put some more snow storage there. So I think the everyday snow storage will probably. Um, be able to be put on the site. Uh, if we get a big snow, um, some of that, we they may have to look at uh, uh, snow removal and, and taking off site. So then snow removal would be part of the outlaw? Yes, I, I believe so. Okay. Who would manage that and, and, and take care of that like seven years later? Or how, how does that get done? The, CD, the CDA. Yeah. The CDA would, would do that, yep. Gotcha. We had looked at Starting an association, but association. Could you, could you approach, please? Sorry. Thank you. And then say your name Thank and you, address. Thank you, Chair. Commissioners, uh, Chuck Swanson, Carver County CDA. Thank you. Um, we had looked at what can we do with the common area. Um, do we do an association or what do we do? But we just felt an association would not work with only four units. So we kind of are going to maintain or keep ownership of the common area so that we will manage. The common area, will there so. be covenants and restrictions, like boat parking and to be determined. trailer parking and those kind of things? Yeah, we don't have that figured out quite yet. So, some some we don't know exactly what the lot lines are going to look like. We're still negotiating that or trying to find. There's a we have our attorney involved trying to help us navigate that. So that's our that's our plan. Um, and then since we're on snow storage, real quick, I would imagine being that. The HPC decided that they liked the flat roof that would be over engineered as such to withstand snow in a Minnesota winter. Yeah, the, the hope is on that flat roof, um, kind of twofold. Um, one is to uh, provide an area for some uh, solar panels. Yep. Um, and solar panels in historic districts sometimes are difficult to achieve um, by using the flat roof. And really, the new technology of solar really wants to be flat. So we were able to put it there. But yes, the engineering of that. The structure um, by Minnesota uh, state code would, you know, uh, 
we have structural engineers that would 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 make sure all of that can you know both the the weight actually the the um, uh, solar panels don't weigh that much is actually an uplift um, issue with solar panels, um, but all of that would be taken care of both snow and and um, what are, you know the the structure that would go on there. Mm -hmm. Liz, this, this may be more of a technical question, um, but when we do the divvying up of the lots, wouldn't unit two turn into a rear versus a side setback? Because right now we're talking about side setbacks to the rear of the buildings, but when you reconfigure that lot to the three different lots, is the rear, is the side now the rear, so to speak? And is it going to have to fall into the rear setback versus side setback? It wouldn't, actually. Uh, the way our front lot line is defined is where it abuts. Today. But we're going to redo the lot line to create a lot for units one, two, and three. So that one lot is now gonna get divvied up into three, plus an out lot. So is that technically going to turn into a rear setback versus a side setback? Not the way the zoning would be arranged and how the, the zoning language is uh, currently listed out. So it, it would effectively have uh, the north lot line be treated as a side lot line and be a five foot setback. So that's where the zoning kind of helps um, uh, provide the uh, kind of the construction limitations for each project is the setbacks that are defined within that. So those setbacks wouldn't change as a result of uh, if the lot lines were to get divvied up it's a certain way on the property. So the front is walnut. Correct. Yeah. Okay. And so going into the development, the orientation of the lot, the front sides dictates it stays that way with carrying through the development, even if you divvy it up? Right. Okay. Yep. With the zone. The way that our That's language is written. I mean, I like what I mean. I love the design. I love what you know how it's progressed. Um, like I said, it, it's it's the part where we're trying to put too much into a small space, and like I said, you've done a great job of, of, of doing that. Um, now it's just a matter of is it too much and not. Uh, yeah, does anyone else have any other questions? If, if not, we can close the hearing and bring it back to us to discuss since so we don't have to stand there. <laughs> you, can call, you can call us back up too. <laughs> okay. Oh, actually, one, um, were there any community or neighborhood meetings for this last round? Not this last round, okay. but they did do one on the front end of things with the council plan, okay. yes. And, and at that community meeting, I think there, um, a couple of the, the business owner neighbors um, did attend that. So um, we were able to talk, talk through that with mm -hmm. them. So. Okay, with that, um, I suppose we just check the Zoom real quick before I close the public hearing. I don't sure, see anyone on there. Abundance of people watching. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody? Nobody. Okay. So at 8.09, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back to commission. Um, I'll just start off by saying, I, I think I voiced a couple of my concerns. The fence, make some evergreens, <coughs> making sure we have access agreements. Um, I think, uh, which commissioner, I can't, I think it was Purdy made a mention about boat and parking and different covenants things. and restrictions. Covenants and restrictions, maybe something that should be looked into, obviously, before the final. Yeah. I, in general, like the whole development. I think it's great that we get a historic building back into the city and being lived in. Um, the extra units, affordable housing, it has a nice little community feel with it kind of facing each other. I think that's a little nice little micro development. Um, 
it is tight as long as all fire life safety is, is good. I'm personally fine. Um, people buy townhomes that have no, I mean, they're like, you know, people buy apartments and condos, so this actually gives you a separate structure as long as fire life safety is good. Um, that's my, my opinion. I do like the project in general. Um, I agree. I, I think it'll be good for the city. Yeah, I think it's good for the city. Does the commission have any other things, items to discuss or questions? Amongst yourselves or for the staff. I do. Oh, the uh, lighter siding I did, which came out of the HPC meeting. It seemed like I, I do also agree with that. Seeing the stark contrast of the Ernst House against the dark gray seemed a little bit um, dramatic. A little, little, little bifurcation there of like the two pieces of, of the development. So something that would match better, I think, would actually be good there too. So um, uh, one quick question, like uh, the zoning ordinance amendment, uh, uh, the change, right? Whatever we are talking about now here, PRD 74 uh, uh, zoning ordinance amendment. Do we need to take um, approve that first, or like uh, I mean, it doesn't matter in the line because oh, the order. So, yeah, because if some of the conditions may dependent on that thing, right? Whatever the changes we are proposing here so I think uh, the preliminary site and building plan and the pre plat motion should happen first huh. and then the, the ordinance yep okay and the ordinance should follow mm -hmm. okay well with that there's no more discussion Would anyone like to make a motion I'll make a motion to recommend the City Council approval of the preliminary site and building plan and preliminary plat for the four housing, housing units on the S lot in Ernst Home, Chaska Yards, subject to the following 13 conditions. Okay, we have first by Commissioner Olson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Olson. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Then we would also need to make a motion for the zoning ordinance. Would like to make a motion. Yeah. Make a motion to recommend approval of the zoning <coughs> ordinance amendment to PRD 74. Commissioner Aswa, is there a second? A second. Commissioner Purdy, right? Yes, sir. Yep. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Just move in a few more things. Other business. This is us. Yeah. Did you want to take over that? All right. Let's recommend. Uh, so, chair and vice chair recommend approval. It's up for nomination. Yeah, I Again. can speak to this if you'd like. Sure. A little bit. Um, so. Per Chaska Ordinance, which establishes, you know, the body of the Planning Commission, um, it does say in there that the City Council should annually or shall annually appoint the Planning Commission Chair and Vice Chair. Um, by practice, the way that Council has liked to see it done is they like to act on a recommendation, you know, from the body, uh, and ha you know, have a nomination for that Chair and Vice Chair position. Um, presently, uh, obviously, Commissioner Brass acts as the, uh, the chair. Um, we had uh, Commissioner Lacey uh, serving, Carl Lacey serving as the vice chair uh, during the last calendar year. Um, but he has since his term ended um, and he decided not to reapply um, for reappointment. So, therefore, he's no longer on the planning commission. So, we do have um, an unfilled I guess position uh, in the vice chair presently, um, and so you know that that would be I guess your task this evening with this item would be to identify uh, who the commission would want to nominate as chair and who the commissioner or the commission would want to chair. I'm sorry, my tongue is not working. Who the commission would like to nominate as vice chair, uh, which then staff would bring those recommendations forward to council at the next meeting um, to make that you know formal vote. Typically, that's a consent agenda type item. Uh, 
council often is willing to defer to the recommendation of the, the commission. Okay. Thanks, Nate. Um, and then it does look like it's two. I mean, I think we had talked on prep meeting. It could be one, but maybe it's possibly best to do two different motions. I, you know, I drafted up as two uh, different motions. Yeah. It could be one motion if you want to fold it all into into one. I think the sure. important thing is that you're you're naming the folks and uh, which you know position you're recommending them to. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I guess I'll start it off. I mean, as your current chair, it's been six months. Vice Chair before that, I would be honored and to keep the chair position and continue with serving the city. Um, and then um, beyond that, I, I'm open myself as who Vice Chair could be. I, I think either would be uh, between, and unfortunately he's not here, either Commissioner Bansky he's or hired. Commissioner Olson would be, I think, the two, <laughs> the two um, senior, senior yeah. people who would fill that role. Um, so I think um, in regards to vice chair, I said, you know, between the two, I think it would be prudent for, it's unfortunate because we got new faces, <laughs> but to kind of discuss who would be the vice chair and I guess the chair, I, again, I would, um, I would be uh, humbled to continue as a chair. I assume that Urbanski is more senior than Commissioner Olson or? I believe. I think so. I, I think that. I think I started as. I was not full fledged PhD at the same time. Even though the three of us came at the same time. Mm -hmm. Okay. I came in as the. Yeah. yeah. I think the way the list goes right now is <coughs> it's Urbanski and then it's Olson, just yeah. in terms of appointments. But I think going into prep and, and just kind of discussing it was. I think we had discussed that Urbanski was, in terms of time, seniority was, was the next in, in line. Um, so I'd be fine with Commissioner Urbanski as, as vice chair. Would, would Urbanski be fine with Urbanski being vice chair? <laughs> 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 That's a million dollar question. So, <laughs> so we did talk with him. He would, he would be OK with it. OK. Uh, yep, so, okay he, we go. so we're not actually spraying it on him. <laughs> Surprising. <laughs> he, he would be okay with it. Um, he's, his appointment is for, I think, another year. We have to verify that, but he said he'd be okay with it through his current appointment. Okay. So, um, if there's any objections to chair or vice chair, no. should we do it with one motion? Can you do one? Sure. Okay. Yeah. So, we'd, we need a motion to recommend myself as chair and Urbanski as vice chair. And we'd like to make that motion. I'll make the motion to have Rob Brass as her chair and Todd Bransky as the vice chair. That was Commissioner Hassan. Is there a second? second? Commissioner Purdy, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Appreciate it. Thank you, you guys. Um, and then with that, we receive other meeting minutes. I think we just hereby receive those. Mm -hmm. Then that goes into adjournment. But before we adjourn, like I said, we do have new faces, and so we usually go, um, we usually gotta kind of go around the horn real quick and just talk about anything in the city, anything personal we want to bring up. And I think it, this would be a good time at this point to have the new faces introduce themselves and kind of give the background and why you why you want to serve the city. So we'll start with start on this side, for sure. Go through for, and then we'll just make our way around. I'm Commissioner Aus Carol Austin. Um, I've lived in the city for since '93. Um, on my own home here since '98, and love the city. Uh, I've worked in civil engineering for over 40 years, so I thought this would be a great addition to lend my ex expertise to it. And, Get involved. Um, Kerber, yep. Kerber. Right? yep. yep. Um, I uh, have lived here for born and raised. Um, haven't you? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> Impressive. Uh, uh, clearly, I, I like this place. Uh, great community. Um, 
So um, I'm, I'm honored to be here. Um, I, I'm also um, involved in the community with, with the Rotary and uh, love to see um, love to see my hometown grow in a great way. Um, love to see the change and, and, and love to see it, see it done um, in a tasteful way. So proud to be here. Great. Uh, hi, uh, I'm Raghavendra Baswa. Well, actually, maybe uh, Sri Venkata Ramakrishna Raghavendra Baswa. So <laughs> probably that, that, that is my actual name. So, you know, yeah, I moved to Chaska in, uh, five years, uh, seven years back in 2000, uh, um, 2018 actually, five years back. So I got the home here and I moved here. So yeah, I mean, my daughter is my inspiration to be part of any kind of, uh, I mean, uh, any kind of uh, voluntary work or anything because she was a preemie and so many uh, people helped her to be the first grader now. And you know, that inspires me every day to uh, come forward and try to contribute whatever the way possible. So that's why I'm here. Great, thanks. Uh, Commissioner Brass, and I think about my fourth or fifth year, I guess I'm not, fourth year maybe. Um, so I originally, so I decided to do this. Originally I was, I was curling and uh, another member that was on here went to council, Greg Bull. Um, he was, we curled together and we were having lunch one day and he said that he thought it'd be good for this based upon my background. I have a structural engineering degree, so I went to schooling for that, but then I went into commercial real estate. I've been doing brokerage for 20 years now. And so he at the time convinced me that I should fill the vacant position in planning commission um, with my real estate background and my knowledge. And so that's that's where I, how I kind of came to here and, and it's been it's been pretty fun ever since. Uh, and he went on and moved to the council and then state house rep. So He's done a lot of work for Chaska and the, and the county. Sure. Yeah, uh, Cindy Gore. I'm originally from tropical southeastern Minnesota. Um, <laughs> and my uh, background is primarily military, and this is the first time I've been able to live somewhere other than my hometown for more than a year or two. So uh, I really wanted to get involved in the community. And I spent a lot of years on the East Coast, and I saw what um, unrestricted development did to cities, even small cities, and, and I thought that would be a, an area of my interest, so that's why I became involved with the Planning Commission. My name is John, excuse me, my name is John Purdy. We moved here um, in 2009 from Grand Rapids, Michigan. Um, I worked for Ford Motor Company for 35 years. I retired in 2019 after being the regional sales manager here for the Twin Cities region. Uh, my wife's an educator. She uh, teaches school at um, Chaska West. All three of my children graduated from Chaska High School. I now have a granddaughter who lives here in Chaska and will be, my family's heavily committed to the city of Chaska. So that's the reason why I uh, decided I would do this with Mark Winchell's little pushing into that too. So <laughs> <laughs> Mark's a good family friend of ours. So good. I'm happy to be here and I look forward to the experiences. Great. Can I? Do you know a Jim Betcher? I do. He's a good friend of mine. So. Oh, really? We'll have to talk later. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Garrett Campbell. I've lived in Chaska now just uh, 13 months. Um, and my wife and I just came from Maple Grove. Um, <clears throat> saw it grow really fast and I was on the fire department there for almost 20 years, retired from there. I'm too old to be a firefighter now. <laughs> it, they work so hard and they do such a good job down here. I figured, well, if I can't do that, I'd love to do some work with the city and this came up as an opportunity and I thought, hey, what a great way to contribute. Great, thanks. Olson. Uh, Travis Olson. I've lived in Chaska for over 15 years now. Um, live in Clover Ridge neighborhood. Um, joined Rob on the commission at the same time. Uh, what spurred me was uh, I was impacted with growth around me um, from a resident side of things. So I had the joy of coming in front of the planning commission uh, with the development that was happening around me. And like 
Rob was nudged from a current member that now is sitting on city council um, to help fill the role from the passion that I had for, for the impact that we had as a neighborhood. So my background is in finance, so I, I work for a, a family company uh, over in Egan, but ultimately it's the being able to bring something other than real estate or construction to uh, to the commission, and that's what I feel like I bring is just the, a different angle of looking at things. And you know, I, I hope that you guys. This was an easy meeting, so it was kind of getting your, you know, kind of warming you up. But you know, as you get into it, it's the matter of being able to open up and to be able to you know, ask the questions based on your background and knowledge. Because the beauty part is, each one of us is different in so many different ways. So uh, we all have something to contribute. Um, and as I've learned, there's no dumb questions because we're all going to learn from it as well, too. So, welcome. Yes, Thank welcome you. Alex. All new members. Thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, I think we just have the adjournment. So if anyone wants to make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. We have a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We're adjourned.